Friday, February the 18th, you should be reading Leviticus chapter 4, 5, 6, and 7, as well as Hebrews chapter 3 today. Uh, if you listened to James's video yesterday, you'll find we're in this new book called Leviticus, and it kind of gets boring and weird, this book does, because there's just lots and lots and lots of rules. But I want to encourage you to read through it. There's some great stuff in here. A Leviticus is this weird word that we have, but really it's actually just this, um, if, you, if you're thinking like, what does this mean? Leviticus is, a, a Le is for the book for the Levite tribes. Uh, and it, what happened was God had set apart a certain tribe of Israel, the Levites, to be the priests of his people. And, and as before, in Exodus, we had rules for the people. God had even more specific rules for his people who would be going between the Israelites and himself, the Levite tribe. Specific rules for how they would engage with people's sins, how they would engage with what God was doing in the world as in mediators, the go-betweens for God and his people. And in Leviticus chapter 4 and chapter 5, and chapter six and chapter seven, which you're reading today, you're gonna to find out that there is a lot of atonement. Uh, atonement is this really fancy word we use in churches. It just means covering or the, a price paid. There is a lot of atonement or coverings or price paid for when we sin, when we choose to rebel against God's holiness and ways. And God has very specific ways for us to have our sin paid for. In chapter 4, and chapter 5, and chapter 6, and chapter 7 is all the different ways to have our sins atoned for and paid for because we are very messy, rebellious people. But I don't want to just fixate on that because we talked about a few days ago our sin. We talked about our brokenness and how, and how it puts this separation between us and God. And remember, we ended uh, Exodus with God's presence being in our midst. God longs to be in the presence of his people. Which is why he provided a way through these offerings for us to come into his presence. What I actually want to do today is kind of, we, we talked about this side of it, the Old Testament side of it. And God wants to be with his people, that we've broken our relationship with God because of sin. And he's made a way to be with us again. But this cool thing has happened. And I don't know if you caught it today, if you read the passage. But if you read in Leviticus about what Moses and his family, the Levite tribe, was doing to be intermediators between us and God, if you flip all the way to Hebrews chapter 3, we actually find the completion of the story. You see, in the Old Testament, we had this Levite tribe that be the go-between us and God because we were very sinful, broken people, just like we are now. But in Hebrews, it talks about how Jesus is better than Moses. You know, the guy that you've read about through all the book of Exodus, the guy who is the leader of this Levite tribe, and that they're kind of cool because they're set apart. They are the ones who are going to be mediating between us and God. And then in the book of Hebrews, he says, as cool as Moses was, and Aaron and his brothers and that tribe, Jesus is better. You couldn't ask for a better mediator between God and you for your sins. And the book of Hebrews is all about how Jesus completed the work that God started in the Old Testament. So we have this problem, this cycle, and it's the cycle that the Old Testament calls the cycle of apostasy. And it goes just like this, how we start with worshiping God and loving him. And then we choose to disrespect God and run away from him and rebel. And then we realize that we're caught in trouble and we cry out to God for help. And then God sends a savior to save us. And in the Old Testament, it was the judges that we'll get to later. Um, or in this case, the, uh, Moses, right? He heard the cries of his people and he sent a savior to help them. We were fully saved by Jesus. But then we do the same thing. We worship God and we love it. And then we rebel against him and we just keep going over and over and over. And Jesus wants to break the cycle. Stop living in brokenness. You were bought at a price and you're valuable and you're worth it and it's time to break the cycle of running away from God. 
And it's time to stop coming on Sunday mornings being like, God, you're awesome. And then on Monday, choosing to rebel and reject him. And on Friday, realizing the brokenness and pain of your life and coming back on Sunday and wishing God to fix you. Live every day surrendered to Jesus. Live every day realizing when you wake up that you were bought at a price, that your sin and your brokenness cost something. And Jesus paid it because he's greater than anyone who's come before. He's the final act in the story that he saved us and he redeemed us. Jesus is worth it and he's worth every moment of every day of your life worshiping. Stop running. Hold on to Jesus and realize how valuable you are because God said so. Our value and worth is not based off of what I think of you, what you think of me. It's all based on who God says we are. So choose today to stop running around the cycle. Choose today to embrace Jesus, to recognize the brokenness of your sin. Choose today though, to live for something greater, which is Jesus. Until we see you again on Monday, church, you are sent.